stand and listen to Psalms 4. Psalms 4, so if you can, you're welcome to open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 4, and we will read the entire chapter. Our call to worship for this morning. Hear me when I call, O God, my righteous. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing, Salah? But I know that the Lord had set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe, sin not, commune with your own heart upon your head, your bed, and be still, Salah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will I show us any God? Lift, Lord will lift up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their own corn and their wine increased. I will, put, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, are, me, are only 
makest me dwell in safety. Amen. With this, we will stand as we meditatively listen to our dexology, which is hymn number 30. Holy God, we praise your name. to worship you and how good it is and how pleasant it is when we worship you together as brethren. Father, be in the midst of us. Encourage us for your word this morning in Jesus' name. Remain standing as we listen to, meditatively listen to hymn number 642, Just Over the Mountains, which will be our hymn of adoration. Jasper and its mansions fair. 
another home but this home is also good right yes. amen we are all gathered here with smiles yeah I can see my smile we all can see my smile but it is a grateful sight to see the church full of happy people and we are all here just to serve the same God a welcome to each and one of us a welcome to the regular visitors and a welcome also to the new visitors also, we want to give uh, honor to that we have a doctor among us. 
if you can raise your hand, so everyone, thank you. And yes, also for the watchers on YouTube and on Facebook, welcome and enjoy. With this, I call the deacons up front. And let us go in a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank thee for bringing us through another week, and you have always provided. Guide us and bless this offering as we show our tithes and offering. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us kindly sit as we listen to our instrumental. O oh brother, be faithful, soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. O oh, soon we shall enter our glorious home, and join in the conqueror's song. O oh brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown? Such deep, such unbounded and infinite love, who died to redeem us his own. O brother, be faithful, the city of gold, prepared for the good and the blessed, is waiting its portals of pearl to unfold, and welcome thee into thy rest. Then, brother, for faithful not long shall we stay, Dark night of sorrow is wearing away. We haste to the glorious morn. O oh, brother, be faithful, we soon will be sent. Creation's omnipotent king. While legions of angels his chariot attend, and armies of victory bring. O oh, brother, be faithful, and soon shall thou be. Now we will have the reading of the gospel. Please stand. This is found in Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 to 9. Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 to 9. And it reads, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which was of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we, ch which we pass through, searched it, it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring it unto us, bring unto us this land, and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel, only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for this, for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. With this, you will need for a word of prayer. Sorry, we will have the response. We will kneel and we will have the response from our cantor.
wrong as I Father, we come to you this morning as we ask for forgiveness. We come to you not because we are worthy, but because we know you love us. We know that you are loving. We know that you will always show us the right path. We pray this morning that as Sister Paris, as she preaches, that she may use as your word, that you may bless us this morning. Guide us, O oh Lord. We also pray for those, those, those that are sick, those that are in homes. Be with them also. Put your hands on them. Show them that in the end, no matter how bad the sickness is, you will come true. Guide us once more. In all this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. This morning, we are blessed to have the word brought to us by our own sister, Annette. Have a prayer in your heart as you listen to Sister Annette this morning. Sister Annette, the time is yours. Thank you, Laverne. Blessed Sabbath to each and every one who is with us this morning in church, praising God together, giving him thanks that in spite of a situation and, and the world situation that is peculiar, peculiar times, in spite of that, we know we receive tokens of his love daily. Isn't that so? Amen. Daily tokens of his love. And um, this morning is almost home. Well, we know we're almost home. We look around us and we know that we are nearing the frontier of that promised land. But we can take some lessons that not automatically when we almost home, we've reached there already. God will exire of us. He expects of us to be faithful till the end. I have some feedback on my microphone. Aha. So when you look at this slide, almost home, you see a desert, isn't that so? And it brings us back to the people of God who were wandering in the desert for many years. They didn't see the promised land as yet, but they were at the frontier. We haven't seen the promised land as yet, but when Brother Claudio sang that, sang that song just over the mountains, 
Behind those mountains, there's the promised land. And the song, we are nearing home. We are nearing home. See the splendor. I don't see the splendor there, but I see it by faith. See the splendor gleaming from the domes afar. See the glory streaming through the gates ajar. There we soon will enter, never more to roam. Hear the angels singing, we are nearing home, we are nearing home. And this is where we stand this morning. We're still in the desert. We're not home as yet. By faith we see the promised land behind, just over those mountains. Yes. The people of Israel, under the leadership of Moses had been wandering quite a while in the desert before they came close to the frontier of Canaan, the promised land. It says, according to the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 1, if you look up Numbers 13, then it says that this incident dates about the fifth month of the second year after Israel left Egypt. So, in other words, they had been walking from the land of Goshen in Egypt, which is more or less on the middle up north, all the way down through the Red Sea, all the way down, coming back to the south, coming back to the north, and then and it was on the front of the Promised Land. They hadn't been walking for 40 years there. They had been walking according to the, to the scripture here and the spirit of prophecy for two years and five months. That was enough to enter the promised land. But we know the story, right? It was a long journey through the, the desert. And the question this morning is, have you ever been journeying and you were not allowed to enter. For example, <laughs> I had to prepare for a journey uh, going to the Netherlands quite a while ago, where still you had to do exams in person there. And I was living in Curaçao, I had to go to the Netherlands. I prepared everything, studied for my exam, my suitcase, and I made a reservation through a travel agent. Because we didn't have so much money, reservation to go to Caracas and from Caracas with the uh, uh, German airline to Frankfurt and from Frankfurt to Amsterdam. So I made that reservation and just a week before the flight, the travel agent calls me and says, there's a waiting list and um, you, you're still on the waiting list. We don't have the place for you as yet. And I was like, oh, I prepared for this journey and I was ready to go but I was not admitted to go. And that's what the moment, that is when fate comes to play a very tough role. And we see what's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you what happened at the end with me also. <laughs> so, in the desert, and I don't know if you've ever seen a desert, my first encounter with the desert was in October 2019. Um, when I had to go for my studies to Africa. And when you go through Europe and you cross the sea to enter Africa, and you look down, you enter over Egypt. So you see Cairo far in the Nile, and you see some green vegetation, everything. And then after a while, it was not sundown yet. But all around what you could see, if you look out the windows, is like golden dust, golden only golden sand. It's like if you're flying in a desert. And this took three hours. Can you imagine flying from here to Miami, for example, and only seeing desert around you? That tells you something of the magnitude of that desert, the Sahara Desert. And the desert is a dangerous place. In the desert, uh, if there's a sandstorm, and you see those mountains, and you say, oh, just over the mountains, that's where the, the city is. 
If there's a sandstorm, it changes the scenery completely because the sand moves, the, the hills move. You don't see the road. So it's very dangerous. You can get lost easily in the desert. And furthermore, we know that there are snakes, scorpions, deadly scorpions. Big place in the desert. There's not water everywhere. And the contrary, it's dry and hot. So imagine that you had to be in a desert for 40 years wandering. How would that be? Do you know that you are wandering in a desert? And longing and asking God, how long will I enter that promised land? How long will it take? What's the, God's plan for them to wander 40 years in the desert? No. Didn't God deliver his people from Egypt, from slavery, with his powerful hand, and his children in the promised land? So what hindered, and this morning I want you to stand still because we can apply it to our times. What hindered the people of God at that time, time to enter the promised land? When reaching the frontier of Canaan, 12 leaders, one leader for each tribe, were appointed to spy out the land. For 40 days, they went all the way up north and came down by foot. And it says here in Numbers 13, verses 1 to 3 and verse 17, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of of Israel, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. Spy out. And they, spy out means bring a report. What, and it, it says here literally in Numbers 30, Moses says, tell us what you see, or write it down, what you have seen, what you hear, uh, how the people are, how is the land, is it a good land, uh, is it a fat land? Um, how are the cities? Do they dwell in tents? Do they live in cities? Do they have walls? Or do how just observe and report? That's the work of those 12 spies. Just observe and bring a report. Now, and two of those leaders were Caleb. Caleb, one of the tribe of Judah was chosen, and also was chosen Oshea, the son of Nun, and Moses called him Yehoshua, which means he shall save. And as we always, as we study the lesson of, of uh, Isaiah, we know that names have a very particular meaning. We have to keep that in mind as well as we continue in our travel through the desert. The spies returned from the land after 40 days. First of all, the leaders brought good report of the land. It surely flowed with milk and honey. But in verse 28, Numbers 13, it says in verse 27, verse 28 of Numbers 13. So here came the spies and giving their report. We came unto the land whither you sent us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. And they brought from a certain province of Canaan, they brought grapes. They never had seen such huge grapes. 
You couldn't just carry it in one hand. You couldn't put these grapes in your pocket. They had two men carrying a bunch of grapes on their shoulders. So heavy they were. So that was the, the prueba, the, the proof that it was a good land. They brought pomegranates and figs. They brought all the fruit of the good land. And then comes verse 28 of Numbers 13. It starts with the word, nevertheless. Uh, when you have a good report and you hear the word, nevertheless, something's not good. <laughs> it's like uh, a routine you hear, you did an exam on somebody and you say, oh, this person, you know, is healing perfect. This part of the, this organ is doing its job. It's restoring. It's doing a good thing. And if it, there's a, a, a point there, I'm in. But if the doctor says, nevertheless, then something is wrong. And so these spies said, nevertheless, it will be strong that dwell in the land. Well, Moses asked them, how are the people? They're strong. And the cities are walled. They were asked to give a report how the cities are. And very great. And then comes the word, moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. They saw giants. And when you continue to read, they say, we saw ourselves in front of those giants as grasshoppers. So the report, instead of being just a, a, a bringing just an objective report, it became a report with an opinion. And there's the trick. The opinion was like, nevertheless, it's impossible for us to enter this land. Nevertheless, we cannot do this. We cannot conquer these giants. We cannot break down these huge walls. We are not soldiers. So where was the, the focus of these majority of the spies? Where was their focus? The focus was on themselves. Had they forgotten that God had delivered them out of Egypt two years and five months ago? where the Red Sea had opened, where he said, I will fight for you and you will hold your peace? Are we so... These men were leaders of tribes, but they forgot what God could do for them. And so the word nevertheless, the word nevertheless is a word that expresses a lack of faith. Ten of our spies were lacking faith, faith and brought an evil report. How is that possible? Chosen ones who express fear? Are we chosen ones? Yes, you are chosen. You didn't choose God, John 15, 16, but God chose you. We are chosen ones, chosen ones, chosen leaders who express fear, who express impossibility. What happened? Why didn't they hold on to God's unchanging hand? I'm asking myself, how come they didn't hold on to God's unchanging hand? Do people tend to forget what the Lord's hand has done? And that's why a testimony the testimony may be 20 years old, old, but if that is what God has done for you, it remains as strong today as it was 20 years ago. He is the same yesterday, today, and into all eternity. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Still, hold your peace. And we know that psalm. Be still and know that I am the Lord your God. And in Romans 8, 31, Paul says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? Well, they didn't have that sure word as yet, but we do in our times. If God is for us, who can be against us? And now we see that only two leaders out of the ten hold on to God's 
promises. We have Caleb, the tribe of Judah, and Joshua, that means that he saves us. In Numbers 13, 30 to 21, that Caleb stilled the people because that evil report stirred up the people. People are eager to hear what's going on, like to hear rumors. And the multitude follows those rumors, but we have to seek out for ourselves. And then it says here, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And then he says in verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. You see the difference? <laughs> One says, we can. Yes, we can. And the other party says, no, 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 we can't. They are stronger than we. One has the perception and the paradigm that God will go before them. And they knew that God, the God that has promised them the promised land is faithful. But the majority, and I am very worried about that majority, said, no, we can't do this. The focus was on the, the situation, on the problem. The focus was on themselves as well. No, I'm too weak to do this. And so, how do you perceive things in life? How do you perceive things during a crisis that you might have lost an income, lost your job? How do you perceive things? Is God who said, I take care of the birds? And you worth much more than them? And you're here today? How do you perceive things? It says, and I read a Bible commentary, it says, we are all spies. <laughs> and I like that. We all are spies here in this world. And your report, and we have to bring a report. And actually we do daily because we, we see things, we hear things, and we don't keep them for ourselves. We bring reports. I really bring reports to my husband, for example. I bring reports. We are all spies. And then it says, your, repair, your report depends not on what you see, but on what you are. I repeat, your report depends not on what you see, but on what you are. In other words, whatever you see and hear, what you are, you are a child of God. You, are, you live in a living relationship with the one who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. And so, uh, it's what you are. That child depends on the report that you bring. And what is the report? That whatever I see, whatever I experience during the day, whatever I hear, and I take that report home, what report do I bring? I have to ask myself. You have to ask yourself. It's very important because your report may influence the listener. And we know that from this story that it influenced the multitudes. So be careful what report you bring home. Now, Caleb had such strong faith. And this is what um, the spirit of prophecy says in a quote from the Review and Herald in 1912. It says that Caleb's faith was it that gave him courage, that kept him from the fear of men, and enabled him to stand boldly in the defense of the right. We can, we, you and I can, through reliance on that same power, the Lord of hosts, the mighty general of the armies of heaven, receive strength and courage to overcome obstacles in our pilgrimage must land. So here we stand, and we can, through that same power, and we have to hold on to that unchanging hand, because we didn't enter that promised land. We Are we there yet? No, we are not there yet. And we know that at the end of times, the enemy is so uh, rough, he's angry. He wants to deceive even the elect. 
So we have to be very careful what we report, what do we see, what do we hear, how do we see, how do we hear, what report do we bring to others. You might be an influence for good or the contrary. So these 10 others, what happened to them? They lost focus on the one all powerful. And if we are fearful for what is to come, where do we go with our fears? Should we express our fears to others? Well, that is what the other leaders did, 10 leaders did. Instead of expressing these fears to the one who had, had delivered them out of Egypt, Lord, this is another adventure. I don't know how, we don't know how we're going to, to fight these giants. We don't know how we're going to break down these huge walls. But we remember that you have delivered it out of Egypt. So we trust that you will do it again. And I like that special song, he will do it again. He's the same yesterday, today and into all eternity. But what happened with the evil report? The multitude rebelled against God in fear and disbelief. Now, we're going to apply in our times. Caleb and Joshua, they rent their clothes. It says here in verse 6 of Numbers 14. That was an expression, if, if leaders would rent their clothes, they were desperate. They were, uh, it was a, a very intense cry out to the Lord when they rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, the multitude, saying, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flowed with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Bread for us means, you know, these giants, these guys, you know, we can... If I have a pocket, I can put them in my pocket. They're bread for us. Piece of cake, that's what it means. And that was their expression in those days. But the, 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 the emphasis here is that there is a promise. Our strong deliverer is giving a promise if, in verse 8, Numbers 14, verse 8, it says, if the Lord delight in us, that's the condition. If God delights in you and in me, then he will bring you to this land and give it to us, a land with both of milk and honey. So there is a condition there. God's promises are conditional, and this is one of them. If then, yes, there are challenges on the way, and there is even a a tribulation on the way that we haven't experienced as yet. What we experience now is just the pains of a woman in labor. And you mothers know what those pains, starting pains are and how they intensify. And if they intensify, the, the, the tribulation will become greater and greater. The tribulation that will come upon this world, Daniel 12 says, there's never been a tribulation like that. And Jesus mentions it again in Matthew 24. So take heed, there's something on the way that we can only prepare for if we have the faith and courage of Caleb. Because uh, when the you say, this is no joke, <laughs> it's not easy, it won't be easy. And it's coming up in the whole world. Now, if the Lord delight in us, here's the condition, because I want this promise to be fulfilled for each and every one of us. We want to enter this promised land. We came to worship this morning, we came to give thanks this morning, 
but we also come to be strengthened because we're on this journey and we want to enter, we want to be ready when Jesus comes. Amen? And so it says, if the Lord delight in us, and the other translation is, if the Lord is pleased with us, and the contemporary English version says, if we obey the Lord, see where it leads? And the Lord delights in them that fear him and put their trust in his mercy. We are reminded of God's promise given to Moses from the burning bush. When you go to your Bible, Exodus 3, verse 8, this was before the people were delivered out of Egypt. God already gave a promise. And that's why you can stand on those promises. When we sing that song, standing on the promises, stand on that promise. Because the, promise, the one who has promised is faithful and true. Exodus 3, verse 8. God is speaking to Moses here from a burning bush. That's remarkable. <laughs> so Moses is listening very careful because this is not a normal situation. And he's giving here a promise. Now listen well to this promise. God says, I am come down to deliver out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them up out of that land unto that land and the large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the per Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Meaning that before they got there, God knew already the whole situation. He knew exactly all those giants and all those people that lived in this promised land, in the land of Canaan. And God already prepared everything. Here was the promise. So he had this sure word, God will give us the land. And Caleb also knew about this promise because Moses shared this promise with all his leaders. God will give us this land. But what happened here? If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into the land. If the Lord is pleased with us, if the Lord has chosen us, if we obey the Lord, obedience only comes when we trust the one who has called us. If we love the one who has called us, and if you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. So there's a relation between obedience and love and a relationship with our Savior. move onward. Pilgrims, <laughs> this is not our homeland. Don't, don't uh, um, stick up to what you have in your hand, your house, your car, your job. This is just temporary. This is not our homeland. Let's move forward. We're on a pilgrimage. We're on a journey to the new Jerusalem. And the pilgrim says, I can tarry. I can tarry. But a night, I, am, I have an urgency. I have to move onward. I have to move upward. I know where I'm going. I believe that I'm almost home. We need to strengthen our faith during these trying times. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Every day by hearing the word, reading the word, prayer, a daily walk of communion with God, giving good reports. That's part of it. Testify. And God needs fearless pilgrims in this century. Fearless travelers who know where they're going and who know who it is that called them. Fearless of what others may do to us. And they may do something to you. But you know that God will have another solution. God's ways are not our ways. His plans are higher. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And if they want to do this, let them do it. God will make a way. 
How is the enemy challenging us in these times? And I already mentioned that the enemy wants to deceive even the very elect. Those are strong words. Are you ready for that? Are you founded in the word? They had faith. Caleb and Joshua were different. They had the assurance that God had led them this far and that the Lord of hosts would continue to be their refuge, their strength. Let's go to Psalm 8. I love this Psalm. When you are in, in times that, you know, you think you're almost there, but there's something happening along the way, read this Psalm. <laughs> we don't read the whole Psalm, but we meditate verses 17. Psalm 18, I will love my rock, my fortress. He's my deliverer, in whom I will trust. My buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Wonderful. If you recite these words and you pray and you call him your tower, your birth, your strength, your refuge, everything God is for you in these trying times. And then you come to verse, I just, just take verse um, 17 till 19. Here, David's experience, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. Do you ever realize what it means that the Lord is your stay? Your focus, your, the Lord gives you peace of mind. He's my stay. I can focus completely in him whatever the enemy is doing. He is my stay. He was Caleb's stay, Joshua's stay. He can be our stay. And you know for yourself if he is your stay. Yes or no? He's my stay. And then in also into a large place. What did he do? He delighted in me. See that it... See how God's word is always fitting in one another? Because he delighted in me. It, a man of my heart, says the Lord. A man, although there were so much tribulation, he always put his trust in the Lord. And so we can do the same and call God on these names. We are reminded that whatever we may face, we shouldn't fear. I see the hour is coming close. That's the only challenge we have when we preach in two services, we have half an hour. But I, I was uh, giving you, you know, you, you're walking not alone in that desert. You have a faithful guide. And I come back to this um, experience that I had when the travel agent told me, and I was ready to fly, and ready to travel, no, uh, uh, Mrs. Annette, um, we only have a waiting list. The airline granted us five places. I remember that call very well. It's about 20 years ago. The airline has granted us five seats for this specific flight, and they're all occupied. And I told the lady, lady, I have an exam to do. I have to get this, this flight. And it's very, very important for me. And she said, well, you know, you're on the waiting list. I look what I can do for you. So I closed the phone. I remember exactly when I, I went down on my knees <laughs> and I start praying. And I said, God, you know, I have to go. I am prepared for this journey. And you know, you know the motive why I'm doing this exam as well, everything. So I opened up my heart before my strong tower. And then during I was on my knees, ring, the phone called. 
on my knees. And I picked up that phone, and the lady said, Mrs. Annette, we have a place for you on board. I shouted in her ears, hallelujah. <laughs> because God, when you have your faith in him, you have courage to step out. You have the faith of Caleb, the faith of Joshua. Light him. When you please him, when you are chosen, when you obey him because you love him, he will give you his promise. Uh -huh. I am, this is a beautiful um, quote that I want to finish with. In uh, Manuscript 5, 1895, I am means an eternal presence. God is my stay. The past, present, and future are alike to God. He sees the most remote events of past history. He sees the far distant future with as clear a vision as we do those things that are transpiring daily. We know not what is before us. And sometimes we want to know. We have to make decisions. God, how will it be if I choose this way or that way? I want to know what, what it will lead to. And he doesn't show you right away. Because if we did, it would not contribute to our eternal welfare. Let him have his way in your life. God gives us an opportunity to exercise faith and trust in the great I am. The one who is our stay. The one in whom we delight. This morning, we are reminded that we are almost home. We are at the, the branch to enter into the promised land. Jesus is about to come. Are we ready to exercise faith and trust in the great I am? Do we need more faith, trust? Ask God. It's a little bit dangerous prayer if you ask for faith because you will be tested. But it will help you to increase in faith and you will need that faith. Maybe you need to come out of a comfort zone. I don't know what is God is calling you for. We're almost home and need to maintain a loving relationship with the one who has chosen us. If this morning, meditate on this. Meditate on yourself standing before, see here is this, this frontier, to enter the promised land. And there may be evil reports. There may be news whereby we might be deceived. We have to be watchful and prayerful and know that as long as we delight him, he will be faithful to us. So my prayer for you this morning is, and I don't know where you stand, Lord, help me to delight in any situation whatever it is, to be a delight in your eyes, in Jesus' name.
wonderful sermon, Sister Paris. We thank you and we thank God for blessing us with such a sermon that we are assured that we are nearing home. Let us please stand as we meditate on the song 440. pray. Dear loving Father, here we are on this Sabbath day. We stand before your throne. We come just as we are, Lord. You know what we are carrying. You know our weaknesses, and you know the hope that we have in our hearts, Father. Father, as we are on this journey and preparing to enter the promised land and preparing to meet Jesus, who is coming soon, Father, we ask you to give us this burning desire to delight you all the way, Lord. Help us, Father, to have this loving relationship with you day in, day out, and the faith and courage to face each situation with boldness, Lord. Help us to be alert when there are false reports or evil reports, Lord. And help us to give ear to the good reports. Father, bless us as we go out 
and continue delighting ourselves in you, Father, on this Sabbath day. Bless our families, Lord. Keep us safe. And we ask you to fill us with the presence of your spirit and continue, Lord, with this double portion of your spirit that we need during these peculiar times. In Jesus' name. Oh, <laughs> 